Greetings, everybody. I want to take you through how to do an aeration oxidation sulfur dioxide analysis. Um, this is one of the more complex analysis that we do, so I'm going to take my time to make sure that you really get a good idea of all the things that you're going to need. The first thing we need is this aeration oxidation still. Um, this is also known as a Rankin still. And so what it is, is it's a glass tube that has a vacuum pump to the, attached to the outside of it. And so that's the first thing we're going to need is a still with our two pear-shaped flasks. The other thing that we're going to require in terms of, of, of uh, hard goods and hardware is we're going to require a 20 mil uh, pipette. We're also going to require a uh, burette full of 0 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide. We're also going to require some sulfur dioxide indicator to help us see when the change occurs. We're going to require a little bit of uh, phosphoric acid at about 25% dilution. Um, and, uh, and then we're also going to require um, a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. This was pre-made uh, and this is 0.03% hydrogen peroxide, so very weak hydrogen peroxide. And of course, we're going to need our good old fashioned uh, wine sample in order to do it. So the first thing that we're going to do when we set up this analysis is we're going to take this top pear shaped flask off. We just pinch these clamps and they come off and the, the flask will slide right off. And then we'll want to put in around 10 to 20 mils of uh, this dilute hydrogen peroxide solution. It's not particularly important how full it is. Um, it doesn't matter volumetrically. We just want to make sure we have enough uh, to be able to see. I'm going to make this one a little bit fuller to make than I normally would to make it really visual so you can see the color change as well. The next thing that we're going to do is take some of our SO2 indicator. We're going to put just a couple of drops in here. And again, that volume doesn't matter, but two or three drops. And hopefully we'll start out with a nice purple color. And then our next goal after that is to go directly to our titrator and go to our burette and go ahead and add a little bit of uh, sodium hydroxide, that 0.01 molar sodium hydroxide to the pear-shaped flask until we get a really nice olive green color. Let's see here. There we go. Oh, there we go. Beautiful. And we don't want it really flashy green. We want it really more olive green because this is the color that we're going to want to titrate back to. So remember that color and just get that really fixed in your head that that's the color we want to go to. And as soon as we get that all set up, we'll go ahead and put it on our, our, our machine here, our, our still. So that's step one is setting up the first flask. So hydrogen peroxide and a little SO2 indicator. Our next step is going to be to take off the bottom flask and prepare our wine sample. So the first thing that we'll do is go ahead and get our auto pipetter out with the 20 mil pipette in it. And then we'll go ahead and grab some of our wine sample. And this is the one measurement that has to be perfect on the front end on the setup is you have to have 20 milliliters exactly. So making sure you get that number dialed in just perfectly. And these auto pipetters sure make that job awfully easy. So then we go ahead and, and drain that down into uh, our, our flask here. So let's go ahead and push the down button and let it all drain out. After we get our 20 mils of, of wine in here, again, very accurate 20 milliliters of wine, we go ahead and do a quick pump, and this is an auto pump, so we take it up and it'll automatically put 10 mils of phosphoric acid in the wine. And we want to, after we do that, we want to very rapidly get that on the still. And as soon as that's on, we'll reach over and click on our still. And you'll notice it starts bubbling really nicely. So one of the things we'll want to do here is take a look at it 
and I want to talk about the science that's happening here really quickly. And first off, you might notice the color is already starting to change up here to purple. Isn't that cool? So it went from that green, and now we've already got this really beautiful, brilliant purple. So what's happening here is I want to talk about the chemistry that's occurring here. So what we have is we have SO2, we have sulfur dioxide right down here that's in the wine. And this is free sulfur dioxide. Again, we're measuring for just free sulfur dioxide. And the goal with this is in order to um, uh, make this measurement happen really well, we added the acid. And when we add the acid, all the sulfur dioxide goes immediately to its molecular form, which means it's a gas. So we turned all the free sulfur dioxide that's in here into a gas. So it's SO2, it's going up through here and into this catch flask right here. And into this catch flask, we have hydrogen peroxide. And so what's really interesting is we took the SO2, we added it to H2O2, and we get a compound called H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. So what we've done is we've taken a gas, we've turned it into an acid, and that acid is what we're gonna titrate against. Now, the thing that we're gonna do at this point in time, as soon as we turn this on, we set our timer for 10 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video um, while I let this happen, and then we'll, we'll start back up again in about 10 minutes um, in order to show you how we titrate this out. Okay, and just like that, 10 minutes has already passed and we've been aspirating the whole time. So what I like to do now is go ahead and uh, turn off the uh, vacuum pump. And then we'll want to titrate this very carefully. Now when we titrate uh, for sulfur dioxide, the titration value is really small. It's not going to be very big at all. So it's going to be a very quick um, titration and you have to be very careful with the accuracy. Whereas titratable acidity, you might use somewhere between seven and 10 mils. When you're doing uh, sulfur dioxide, you might use under a mil sometimes because the multiplication factor is so big. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we'll take a look at our burette and our burette is reading right at um, eight milliliters. And so we're gonna start at eight is our starting titration. And then we're gonna go very carefully and uh, just add a little bit at a time do a quick swirl. Every time you just add a little bit, and a quick swirl, add a little bit, a quick swirl. And it's okay to go slow with this because you only get one shot at 10 minutes per run. Uh, that is sure going to be challenging. So, oh, we're going. You can see that the color purple is already a little bit darker, so this isn't going to take much more. One more quick little turn, and we're not quite to the olive green that we started at yet. Do one more quick turn. And now we're nice back to that perfect olive green. Not flashy green, just nice and olive green. So that means we are ready to go now and move on to our total. So we want to take a look at our burette, and we're going to measure very accurately. And it, we went from 8 milliliters to 10 milliliters exactly. So that means we had a two milliliter difference between these two uh, samples. So uh, that means that two milliliters and we multiply whatever our titer value is by 16. So in this case, two milliliters times 16 uh, will equal uh, 32. And that is your answer, 32 parts per million of sulfur, which is about what I would expect for a red wine at College Cellars. So now that we've done free sulfur dioxide, we need to do bound. And so bound sulfur dioxide is it's any SO2 that's stuck to something, something, whether it's tannins, aldehydes, pyruvate, other things like that in the wine, um, we need to break that bound in order to measure bound. Now, uh, bound SO2 isn't terribly important in the grand scheme of things, other than really to worry if you're bumping up against the legal limit or trying to get through malolactic. So uh, most wineries, it's not a, a, a standard operating procedure um, thing, but it is something that's important to know how to do. So in order to break those bonds, uh, it requires heat. So what we do is basically the exact same thing as we did before. We reload it, we're back to an olive green. Um, in this case, I'm gonna keep the original wine sample because we've taken all the free SO2 off. And now I'm gonna want to uh, break those bonds and we do that with heat. So what we have is we have a little uh, sterno lamp 
We're going to go ahead and light that up. We're going to put that heat unit right underneath our sample, and then we're going to turn on the aspirator. And what's going to happen is, is it's going to take a while. Notice the, the color green doesn't go away right away. It's going to take a while until the sample gets hot enough that we start to break those uh, bound SO2 bonds. So we're going to go ahead and let that heat up for a minute. And um, then we're going to wait now about 10 minutes under heat. And then we're going to let it cool down for a minute or two afterwards. Uh, and then we'll measure our, uh, do our next titration. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this again, and we'll come back and we'll do another titration. Okay, so we're coming up on about 10 minutes now. But one of the things I neglected to mention uh, when we started this video is before you start a total sulfur dioxide, you'll note that right here there is a condenser, and this um, is, has water passing by it. And you'll always want to turn on your condenser right here at the sink, before you even start running a total sulfur dioxide. A free SO2, you don't need it, but a total you do. And the reason for that is, is volatile acidity can be boiled off in this process and the volatile acidity goes up and over into here, it'll mess up your results. So we wanna make sure that we have this condenser running the full time. So we've been coming up on about 10 minutes now. So what I like to do at this point in time is go ahead and blow out the heat and let it continue to uh, aspirate for a little while. Um, the reason for that is, is perhaps that we get a little more bound SO2, but primarily what I like to do is it's a safety feature. Um, because if you get in the habit of letting it cool down for two or three minutes, um, then you won't be liable to reach under here and grab this. And I've seen a lot of people over the years uh, go to clean up the still and uh, they'll grab this and they'll burn their hand. So uh, generally is a good, good rule of, uh, that I like to stick with is I like to go ahead and wait a couple extra minutes just to let it cool down. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and, and move quickly on this because I don't think you need to wait all that long. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the uh, aspirator. We're gonna remove the clamp. We're gonna grab our uh, sample flask here. And we're gonna go ahead and do another titration. Um, and bound SO2s can be more or less depending on uh, how long you let it run. but. We're gonna go ahead and just do our titration where we're really slow and steady. Again, we started at 10 milliliters. And we're gonna go ahead and go through this until we get down to however much we need to get to. Oh, we're already starting to get a little bit less purple. So we're gonna go ahead and just do another little turn there. Oh, we're in this gray zone, so we're really close. So just one more quick twist will probably get us back to that olive green. And there we are, that beautiful, uh, kind of olive green. That's the color we're trying to titrate back to. So we'll take a look up at our burette and we went from 10 milliliters to 13 milliliters. So that means we have a difference of three milliliters and three times 16 is 48. So that means our bound SO2 is 48 milligrams per liter on this wine. So our free SO2 was 32, our bound is 48, and that would make our total sulfur dioxide 80 milligrams per liter, 32 plus 48. That's a pretty sweet deal. And that's about spot on for the Syrah that we're running in this lab. So that's how you do a uh, SO2. Now, of course, when you're all done, your primary thing is gonna be to make sure that you clean up your lab station properly. So one of the things that you always wanna do is run your, uh, vacuum tube one more time and go ahead and pop it off while it's under vacuum so you get all that uh, stuff out of there. And then we go ahead and turn it off. And we wanna drain that down the tube. And then, of course, we wanna check and see how warm our flask is and it's, it's not too hot. So we can go ahead and pop that off. And of course, we always wanna make sure that we really clean up our stations nicely. So we always wanna come in and rinse everything out. But one thing I do recommend that when you put everything back together is it's really important to keep the wine flask on the bottom because it has a lot of acid in it and keep the pear-shaped flask on top that is uh, for the catchment because sometimes when you mix up these two, um, the acid down here can throw off your results. So that's uh, how we do a free and a total sulfur dioxide.